Hello traders and welcome to Do You Have a Good Trading Strategy? I've put together what I think in my seven years of crypto trading, what are the most important factors when we are assessing our own strategy? So you're gonna notice, I'm gonna feature a few different strategies uh, and a few different tenets of different strategies. With each strategy, I'm not saying how much uh, I believe it's profitable, rather I'm just ranking um, each strategy on just objective tenants that I think will, will help you out. So again, each of these rankings, when I give you for, for different indicators and strategies, it's not, you know, how good is the strategy? That's not really what it's supposed to do. It's just supposed to paint you a picture for what you're supposed to expect when you perform these strategies. As with what I've said many times before, if you are interested, you can join our premium discord link in the description below. So many other good strategies that I'm not going to feature today can be found there, and I'd love to talk to you about them. All right, let's dive in. Here are the seven tenets that I thought were most important without me making some kind of value judgment and saying, oh, strategy one is, is better than strategy two. These are the seven, as you can see right here, that I just thought were really, really important. Now, the way that I've ranked these is kind of interesting. The top, like consistency and costs and fees are the least important. Then the most important tenets of the strategy are at the bottom, like risk of ruin and risk management inefficiency and market conditions. So the lower that you get, the more important that those factors are. Let's begin. Bitcoin dollar cost averaging. How does this rank up with the seven tenants that I've talked about? Again, not profitability, but just different parts of it when it comes to risk management and really what you can expect and how you can use this. Okay. It's kind of consistent. Um, you know, I did not give it a green. Green would be fantastic. Yellow means it's okay. And, and red means that it's uh, horrific. It's not really the most consistent strategy because you have to wait for Bitcoin volatility in order to do DCA, right? So not really the most consistent. Uh, cost fees are okay. A lot of times some Bitcoin exchanges like Coinbase and other uh, just spot exchanges can have kind of bad fees. The cost can be kind of high to trade. This is what it's good at. This strategy is amazing if you are talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, you could, you could trade this with really almost any amount of liquidity. You could trade on Coinbase with hundreds of millions of dollars if you DCA'd it right and just put orders at good levels, you'd be fine probably, okay? So this one, really any position size can do because you're long-term investing in Bitcoin and long-term uh, selling Bitcoin. Is it adaptable to different market conditions? This one was hard for me to rank, kind of. Um, it kind of is, but it kind of doesn't have to be because it's a long-term view at value meaning, hey, I think that I want to buy in the 30s and sell in the 40s. And then you do that over a period of a year. You know, I don't really know if that's the most adaptable strategy. So it's kind of in the middle, I would say. Now the first red, meaning it's bad at something. It does not exploit inefficiency. You cannot tell me that this is exploiting some speed advantage or some information advantage. The only thing that it might be exploiting is cascading liquidations or a lot of people panic selling, but I don't really think that's strong enough to give it a, a yellow, I would say. All right, let's go farther down. Easy risk management. Okay, what I meant by easy risk management, guys, is if you are in a position or if you've just used a strategy, how easy is it for you to manage your money? How easy is it for you to perform this strategy and to make sure you're, you're using risk well? DCA is okay. It's supposed to kind of de-risk in a way, but an issue is if you do dollar cost averaging with Bitcoin, and then it goes to 19K. When you started at 50K, you're kind of screwed, right? So risk management's a bit weird with this strategy, a bit tough actually. Risk of losing it all, virtually none. Um, unless, you know, you have the view that Bitcoin's gonna, gonna go to zero, it gets a green. Here are the lists for really, what is it good at? What is it okay at? What's it really good at? So if you're a fan of things that are just really no risk of losing every single penny in your account, also, maybe you have a bigger size, then maybe, yeah, this strategy could be for you. Again, we're not talking about profitability, but just the other factors that are not profitability. Okay, RSI trading. So we gotta make some assumptions here, guys. So what I'm assuming is you are doing RSI trading on a one hour time frame using period 14. Period 14, RSI, one hour time frame, Bitcoin Coinbase. That is the most basic, beginner, just super, super new to crypto kind of strategy. And the period of 14 is just staple. So, okay, that's what we're doing. Consistency is fantastic. I mean, RSI, you do have to wait for overbought or oversold signals of below 30, above 70, um, an indicator value. But 
you know, you could do this on Bitcoin on the one hour, or you could do this on 20 million other altcoins. The consistency is really good because there's just so many coins out there that you can do this on. And yeah. Um, okay. Cost fees. I went ahead of myself. The cost and fees are actually pretty good because you can pick any exchange you want to do this R RSI strategy. On Coinbase, the fees would be pretty bad, but I put it as green because really you could do this on a lot of different exchanges, which are going to lower your cost. So it's really not that expensive. Uh, to do and also you don't need to get some software or really buy much to do rsi unless you're trying to automate it and even then there are a lot of free ways that you can automate an rsi strategy it's not the most difficult liquidity is not really an issue uh i put this as a green it's more of a weak green but i don't really see how liquidity would be an issue uh if you're using an rsi strategy so it's good at the small things for sure now let's go to other things it is not in the slightest adaptable to market conditions I don't know if I'm going to get hate for this in the comments from the RSI lovers, but the whole point of the indicator is choppiness. You're going to make money when the market's overbought or oversold, and you're going to lose money during a trend. That's what you're signing up for, right? A lot of people are like, no, during an uptrend, I might be able to buy the retracement and, and, and just hold during the uptrend. No. If you do this strategy correctly, what you're going to be doing is you're going to sell during that uptrend or short during that uptrend, and it's going to keep hitting your stop loss because RSI is just going to keep being overbought in that uptrend. It's not adaptable. That's where it's just not great. It is the absolute opposite opposite of an inefficiency. There, there's really not much inefficiency there that I can really think of. So it gets a red for that. Easy risk management. I gave it a yellow because it it is manageable. Um, so if you get into a position, you could just put a one percent stop loss, maybe a five percent stop loss based on altcoin volatility. Um, it's not the most tough. To, to risk manage. So that's why it gets a yellow. It's just not, you know, the most difficult. Risk of ruin, meaning liquidation or losing every penny you own. I, I mean, it can happen, but again, this specific strategy, if done the just staple way, which is just like stop loss two or 3% below uh, my entry price or above if I shorted, there's really not much risk of ruin, not immediately at least. It's not the most EV plus EV strategy, but you're not gonna lose everything if you do it the way that people tell, uh, you know, tell you to. Altcoin breakout trading. Okay. So what I define by this is you're on the one hour time frame again, or on the one day, four hour, higher time frame. You're looking at major highs and major lows, and you're just looking for a clean, let's say a 1% break above a major high, uh, above a, uh, the tip of a high, the top of a high, or 1% break below the bottom of, um, of a range low. So a breakout. It's very consistent. Uh, you are looking at thousands of altcoins in spot markets and futures markets if you want to short. There's thousands of options. There's so much consistency. Every single second of every single day, you will find a coin that's breaking out and up 50%. It's not hard to find. It's very consistent. Cost of fees are really not that bad. Slippage can be a bit bad uh, because, you know, liquidity can be a problem because a breakout trade is trading during a time when there's a lot of volatility, which can lead to poor liquidity. You know, it's not really the most liquid. Like if you're trading an altcoin with a breakout trading strategy, no, you, you can't get a million dollars worth uh, long of an altcoin that has a market cap of like, let's say 20 million. Uh, you're not going to get a good price. You're going to get a horrific price unless someone really wants to sell and then you're probably screwed. Um, but then you could buy there, but probably not a good sign. But yeah, cost fees are great because you have a lot of venues to pick from to make your, your breakout trade. However, it's just not great when it comes to, you know, liquidity. Okay, this technically, yeah, it's it's moderately adaptable. A breakout trading strategy can fit really any kind of market term. A choppy ranging market, it kind of hurts this strategy. But at the same time, I put it at yellow because you have so many different markets to pick from that it's not really the biggest issue. Uh, but at the same time, it's not something that you can do at any hour of any day. You know what I mean? You're not explaining an efficiency, not, not in the slightest, no. There's no speed advantage or information advantage. Maybe you could argue like, hey, there's a speed advantage in being able to buy uh, before everyone else does during a breakout. No, not, not really. This is not arbitrage. This is just breakout trading. It's not you know, that complicated. Easy risk management. I actually put this as green because I really do think, guys, that and gals and bots that are watching this, I really do think that risk management's easier for this than it is for RSI. Because for me, what I've done and will continue to do is I put a trigger order to enter into a breakout, correct? Then I push the TPSL. For those that don't know what that means, that's a take profit stop loss combo order. 
I'm just going to put the SL to, let's say, 2 or 3%. So that means that I will be I will be close out of my position if price goes just two or three percent against me. That's all that's going to happen. So let's say it's a long TPSL. That means if price goes up, it triggers my buy. I have a breakout trade that's long. Now, if price comes back down and retraces, it will hit my stop loss three percent below. Um, I also have a take profit higher. Risk management is really not that hard with this. Uh, if you set the proper TPSL, this is one of the better strategies I would say for risk management. I think it's better than RSI just because I've had issues in the past where, do you know when RSI is consistently under, underbought and you don't want to take a loss? Like when RSI goes into into um, oversold, right? And you buy, and then price goes down to your, your stop loss and it's about to hit it, but you're like, it's still oversold. That's why I gave RSI um, uh, yellow risk management, whereas altcoin breakout trading, more of a green to me because you just have arbitrary rules for trading a breakout and it works well, so. Risk of ruin, eh, yellow, I mean, it, it can happen, but if you do the strategy I was talking about of just simple breakout trading with a 2 or 3% stop loss, your risk of losing every penny in your account, not that high, really. All right, now a fun one. I did this a few weeks ago on uh, Teller, on TRB, um, and it, it was really fun, but uh, I want to go over this strategy. This is uh, buying a coin and just sending it to another exchange to sell for a higher price. This is also known as just spot arbitrage, simple arbitrage, coin arbitrage, the most basic form of arbitrage you can think of. It's this. Got it? This is the most inconsistent strategy no demand. No consistency. Repeatability is not there. It, it is not an easy strategy to pull off. It is not consistent. You have to scan for it or get alerted to it, but it's not something that just pops up on your doorstep at all. Not like RSI. It's very, very, very expensive when it comes to arbitrage monitoring software or when it comes to paying blockchain fees of me sending this coin, uh, like let's say UMA today, UMA had some arbitrage potential, me sending it from let's say Gemini to another exchange, it adds up in the fees and it's annoying. So also sometimes when you're doing arbitrage, you're sending it to another exchange that might have higher trading fees. So makes it worse. Liquidity can be yellow. I mean, it depends on the arbitrage, of course. Like sometimes you can get a really good one where you could buy, let's say, like 30% below in one exchange, buy a lot of money worth and send it to another. But a lot of times you just don't have a lot of good liquidity, but it's not like a red, you know? So it's a yellow to me. It's kind of adaptable. You cannot do this in any market, though. Um, you really can't. If there's a market that's like Luna or FTT, uh, do you guys remember when FTT, uh, Luna, UST, those kinds of coins were crashing? That's not arbitrage. That's buying something and sending to another exchange and you're not going to be selling it for a higher price. So in that sense, this is not adaptable. No. You have to have a positive uh, uh, bullish market or choppy market that's sideways. You cannot have a strong downtrend or what's the point of even buying it, you know? I mean, I guess I, you could say, Bennett, what if I was bag holding and I wanted to sell another exchange? Then yeah. If you had bought it earlier at a bad price and you're just like, I want to sell it, just send it to another exchange that has a better price and just sell it there, I guess. But yeah. Exploiting inefficiency. 100%. You are. Green. Yeah. This is very much exploiting inefficiency. I mean, it's exploiting the arbitrage inefficiency. Um, it's not exactly an information. or It is an information advantage. What am I talking about? It's not a... It actually is both an information advantage and a speed advantage because you have to be faster than other people to buy and sell at the correct prices. So I, I guess it is. Um, but to me, it's more of an information advantage, I would say, because you have to know about it before you can be speedy. This is terrible. Okay, so th this is the part where this is probably the worst strategy when it comes to, not the worst, but it, it's an awful strategy with risk management. I mean, either you buy this coin and then send it to another exchange and you're just like praying that the coin doesn't dump 20% or 50%, which makes the risk management horrendous, or you arbitrage it by shorting a perpetual. Um, but what if there isn't a perpetual to, to, to arbitrage it? Or what if there's a decoupling of the price between the, the, the spot asset and the perpetual and then you lose money that way? So the risk management's terrible. It's not easy at all. And also the blockchain transfer can take a long time it could take hours. By then, who knows what the price will be at, so not great. Do you have a risk of ruin? Uh, yeah, but it's not It's not awful. You know, it's, it's not, um, because you're not using any futures besides maybe a hedge, 
you don't really have that much risk of your account going to zero. And that's what a risk of ruin is, guys. Why I put it on here is the number one most important tenet. Uh, this is just what are what is the likely what's the probability that your account's going to hit zero dollars? It's not that high, really, with arbitrage. It can it can because if you send it to a scam exchange because uh, you didn't do your research or they just turned into a scam, then yeah, I mean it, it can totally happen. But it's not as scary as some of the other strategies that I will show you. All right, <laughs> let's go. You read the title Rollbit One Thousand X Scalping. For those that don't know, Rollbit's an online casino that offers crypto products where you can trade altcoins, yes, Bitcoin and altcoins with a thousand times leverage. So yeah, please don't. But if you do, have fun with your money while it lasts because it'll be there for about like two to three minutes before it's gone. Is it consistent? Yeah, it's totally consistent. I mean, it's consistent at losing you money if you, if you do a thousand X scalping, but is it consistent? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, realistically, if you do have a strategy that works for you at that amount of leverage, which is impossible, really, unless it's like latency stuff or statistical arbitrage, um, if you do have some kind of advantage, then yeah, you can consistently pull it off. It's not like arbitrage where you have to wait. You know, this is something that you can do at any hour of any day, any time. So it's very consistent. The fees are horrendous. Uh, if you ever look at Rollbit, the payout structure is weighted against you completely. The fees are way worse than I'd ever ever imagined. It's like they, they take a profit cut of your winning trades. And not only that, but the distance to liquidation is really, really close. So it, it's just awful in, in really every way. Yeah. Oh, you want to know what I found? <laughs> what I found was that so a thousand X, you would expect that a 0.1% price move against you would liquidate you, right? Because that would make sense if you do the math in your head. 0.1% times a thousand is 100%, which would mean a total loss of your position. Actually, no. Rollbit will liquidate you on just a 0.035% move against you. Let me say that again. If you use a thousand X leverage, you would be liquidated on a 0.035% move against you. So have fun with that. All right. Is it uh, re relative liquidity? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's liquid. I mean, you, you can easily get hundreds of thousands of dollars totally. So that's not hard. Is it adaptable to different kinds of markets? Like the market being choppy, the market being not that volatile, the market being very volatile? I mean, yeah, it's very, very adaptable. All right, now let's go into the, the other, other parts. Is it inefficient? I mean, is there any inefficiency that you're exploiting? No, you are the inefficiency. The casino is being efficient by having you trade against them. Uh, it is the most inefficient thing I could ever imagine. There's no speed, no information advantage that you have. And even if you did, why would you use Rollbit? Why not just use a traditional futures exchange, you know? So there's really no inefficiency there. Risk management is not easy because you, how on earth can you even risk manage in a thousand X position? I, I just, I, I can't even think of a way. I mean, the only way you, the only way you could do it is maybe put a stop loss right before your, your liquidation. But then even then it's just going to get hit. And if it doesn't get hit and you profit, you're just probably going to lose in the next trade and then chase that loss and go to zero. So it's not really yeah it's not really easy to risk manage i had to i had to look up online blood emoji and i put five blood emojis right here uh because it's it's worthy of it risk of rune five blood emojis your risk of rune i think is in the other strategies guys your risk of going to zero is not more than i'd say 50 percent in rollbit i can confidently say if you hit that amount of leverage a thousand times a thousand x your risk of rune is 100% over 50%, 100%. Uh, the majority of the time, your trades will probably liquidate your entire account. And that's the beauty of, of Rollbit, that they get, they make so much money off of that. And if you go to the Rollbit liquidation feed, it's just constant liquidations over and over again. So yeah, so these are the seven tenets that I would rank really any strategy you can throw my way. This is how I would do it. Now, I like the fact that I didn't include profitability because that's a little bit more biased. That's a little bit more like, hey, what has made me money? Um, and you know, you might be different. However, I, I can't say I, I'm really confident in the way that I rank these. When it comes to just other objective factors like the cost, the liquidity, how likely is it that you're gonna lose everything? Stuff like that is just easier for me to, to rank. So what I would recommend is take this right here, take a screenshot or just do it yourself. Get any strategy that you have and I hope that the strategy that you're thinking of right now or that you're using right now 
that it already does have a proven edge, okay? Because this is step two. Step one is having an edge, having a good strategy. Step two is this, okay? So this is taking strategies that do have an edge. I mean, all of these strategies have an edge, probably except for the roll bit one, um, and maybe RSI, but whatever. Um, and then put it to the test with this and just see how it ranks. And it doesn't have to have all greens, you know? There are very good strategies that can be pulled off. Like exchange arbitrage is not a bad strategy. It's just very risky, but very risky does not make something bad. You know what I mean? And breakout trading is also not a bad strategy at all. It's just, you know, there are some things you have to look out for and that's why I put this here. So with that, go rank your trading um, setup, no matter what it is. And if you want more trading ideas, strategies, you can join the discord in the link below. Happy trading and stay safe.